Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I obey your word. Embracing the great teacher, seeking the heart of God next on So What? Hi, I'm Chris Norman. And I'm Don Wade. Welcome back to So What? Guess where we were last week? Audio feed! Yes, Yay. it was great. We had a great time. We had a great time. It was nice seeing people for the first time, meeting them, hanging out with them. It was great seeing old friends from last year. Really enjoyed myself, enjoyed the music, enjoyed the worship, enjoyed the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Uh, Don, it was your first time. What did you think? It was a wonderful experience. It was it was everything you want to see in the church. Yeah. Right? It, yeah. it was awesome. It really, it really was. was. Mountaintop experience, for sure. Truly. But, but you know what, Chris? We met so many people that that their lives are a mess right now. I met a guy whose heart is being ripped out of his chest right now. You know who you are. You know what? Life didn't stop being broken just because they were at audio feed, right? And 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 life is full of disappointment, Chris. It just is. Scott and I talked to a, a man who was there who we, we both saw him in the crowd and, and saw that in the midst of hundreds of people, this man felt all alone. He felt isolated and was in a great deal of pain. And, and unfortunately, that's the sad reality of life. Right. This series is called Seeking the Heart of God. And as we wind down this series, we told you we wanted to give you tools to implement in your own life to draw you nearer to Christ. One of the things that we have to always remember we must never, ever forget that this world is tainted by sin. It is broken. There was a band on our stage called Earth Groans. The mm. word tells us that the world itself groans under the weight and pain and the agony of sin. And beloved, if we're going to draw near to Christ, we have to look at life honestly. Yes. Realistically, that life in the best of times is still broken right. by sin. Look, the, the outer man is wasting away. Right? But the inner man is being made new day by day. But you know what? The outer man is wasting away. All of creation has had decay pervaded. Okay, everything's falling apart, Chris. Right. That's right. Right? Including you and me. Our health, our lives, the lives of those we love. Everyone you know is going to die. And, and It's yet, inevitable. And yet, we can't allow that to paralyze us. Right? We have to recognize that the world is broken but we can't allow that to push us into a self-protective mode Chris where we're gonna say you know what I've got to mitigate that I've got to figure out a way to get out of that I'm not gonna feel that pain I don't want to have the effects of the fall in my life the worst thing that could happen is you see a message like this and go so they're saying that life is painful and life is difficult and 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 that is true it but is. then to take from that oh well, then I then to fall into the great sin of self-protection I'm just, you know what then I'm not gonna give myself fully to anything or anybody I'm gonna hide away and spend my life locked away in my room or in my office and find my fulfillment in my job in my children in my house whatever that is not what God wants of us he wants us to take that love of Christ he wants us to take that light and get it out from underneath the bushel to get out there in life and celebrate life as God gives it. It's a fine line. Right? We are in thin ice here. We, we definitely we are. are we are in thin ice here. Chris, this is a beautiful setting that we're in right now. We, it is. It's absolutely serene. I love it here. I feel so peaceful here. Yeah. The beauty of the trees, the birds we've seen, the fish that are even in this little pond. I mean, yeah. it really is wonderful. It is. You know? But, but, but it is broken, Chris. It, it is. is broken. And we'll talk about that in the Facebook post. I really do hope you read it this week. So, so, so what what's are, the answer, Chris? Yeah, so so what, are we, what are we saying here? We are saying that in order to draw near the heart of God, you must have expectations that are biblical. Many people grow disillusioned with Christianity when their expectations aren't realized, when this joy that they thought would just be theirs every single day isn't there when they thought that there would always be health, that there would always be prosperity, that there would always be happiness, and no loss, and no pain, and no sadness, and no death. When their unrealistic expectations aren't met, they get, dis they get disillusioned with God. I've done that. Yes. I have personally we, done that. We all have done that. I it pulled me that. away from God. Pain is, it can be a great teacher. Yes. Pain is designed to draw us nearer to Him, not drive us away from Him. 
And so we want to be sure that we don't c c fall into a self-protective cocoon where we are afraid because of past experiences, because we are afraid of suffering the inevitable pain of living in a, in a, in a fallen world, that we don't give fully of ourselves in all of our situations. He wants us to do that, to pour ourselves out like a drink offering, to give of ourselves, to give everything of ourselves in this life, realizing that our hearts will be broken, they will be crushed, that we will face disappointment and anguish that is unimaginable, but inevitable. But Chris, you, you, you know what you're telling me? You're telling me that I need to open myself up. You're telling me that I need to go and enjoy life and to give myself to others and to love God and to love others in such a way that it opens myself up to be destroyed. You're telling me that I need to go headlong into pain. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what our Lord wants. So how do I get through that then? By trusting in God. By putting your hope in Him and in heaven and not in this world. Right. This is not heaven. We can't have heaven now. It's something we long for. Right. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. It's not in this world. My hope is not in all these things that are broken, Chris. That's right. And it can't be. And that's what pain teaches me. That is what's going to show Christ's grace and his glory more magnificently than anything else could. Right? There are few things that magnify the glory and grace of Jesus Christ than someone who is trusting in Jesus through the midst of terrible circumstances. I've met, I, Pastor Bob is one who's been going through some very difficult things right now. But his faith is rock solid, not in a, rob a robotic, mechanical kind of way. He is embracing Christ and abiding in Christ in a time when things are very difficult and very painful. And you can see his heart is full of love and trust and hope and hope and that kind of relationship inspires me it inspires others so the worst thing you could do is hear a message like this and then pull away right. and say oh my gosh life sucks everything's terrible therefore I got to pull away that is you living the life of Adam seeing that you have to manage your pain you are self-sufficient you don't need to trust God you just have to trust yourself and your resources and that beloved is wicked that's the worst sin of all, that sin of self-protection, that sin of self-sufficiency. No, realize your heart is meant to be broken in this world. It should be because there is pain and loss everywhere. What can get us through this life? What can get us through that pain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know, the Lord says, you know, in his word that, that he doesn't desire sacrifice, but a broken and a contrite heart. That is what he desires. In our brokenness is when we can draw closer to the heart of God than in any other time. He will use your pain and your brokenness to just bring you in, Chris. Bring you in. He can transform your life through pain. And through your transformed life, you can encourage others to trust in Christ that he might transform their lives as well. That's how it's supposed to work, beloved. That's the hope of the gospel, Chris. That's exciting. That is our only hope. Embrace the great teacher. Thank you for tuning in, my friends. And I'll talk to you in two weeks. We'll see you soon.